Hello guys, I'm going to try to sit here and do us a little quick uh, workbench Wednesday. Um, just, you know, sit here on the bench and do some working. Um, maybe, so, hopefully some of you guys can come and join in, um, hang out with me. Let me get that out of the way and do a little bit. Um, don't know if you guys noticed a few minutes ago, well, a couple hours ago, um, Lucifer uh, pulled up uh, a new... Um, little how-to on um, doing the soldering and um, he expresses his opinions on some of the solderings. Um, I use a lot of the soldering myself for the exhaust itself and he struck on a very good point um, when using some of your solder guys make sure you go with the solid um, silver you don't want that resin core um, to add to what Lucifer was saying earlier um, um, Clutch had mentioned that the the rosin core will leak. It will never dry out, and it will leak, and then it tarnishes um, the brightness of the silver color, and it will actually eat into some of your plastics. Um, so that was fresh on my memory. Um, another thing is um, I contacted um, some people that were close to Blair. Um, we're getting stuff in the process for that. Um, group build and I've, I've been collecting stuff for the giveaway um today i went out and i got the three colors that blair um used i was going to give you guys um i was going to give it away in um these little eyedropper bottles this is what i put it in instead of having the great big bottle opened up i just squeeze out what i need um but even blair himself said in his videos that he uses a lot of it and all this so i thought i'll just go guys get you guys the real bottle so i'm adding these to the bundle giveaway um so i'll have all three of these um to give in there um like i said we already got um this set of uh zimmerman daggers um we're trying to scrape up a 34 ford kit um between a couple of the collectors that i know um ebay is just so damn outrageous right now me and, and gap hill speed shop uh <laughs> we were looking uh yesterday um we were looking yesterday together on some 30s um because blair really enjoyed the 30 um so we thought we'd add that to the bundle to give away and we seen people selling them for 190 dollars 230 dollars uh, and, and it'd be different if they was trying to sell a case uh they're selling one model <laughs> So it was like, it was outrageous. So I'm slowly getting stuff together. And like I said, as soon as everything pans out, guys, um, um, we'll get you the final details on that. But a lot of people are coming together for it. Um, we was talking about um, outreaching and, and then how far you can go and what you can do. And it's amazing um, when you actually get out there and do an outreach. And if anybody um, was able to do it, um, there is a GoFundMe um to help out rick's family um i mean blair's family uh rick is rick has the link i'll have to get the link from rick um but for me i want to do something to give back to the community that he loved um jackie was unprepared for blair's passing so she does the funding would help her um i'm trying to you know what our bundle that we're giving away is just an appreciation bundle there's no charge um steve zimberman had, had asked me if we were doing um a benefit auction um and i told him no we're gonna have a build off that best um shared blair's talent and style and um but there is some fun. There is a GoFundMe page. Um, I'm not saying anybody needs to go over there and or should be obligated to do it. Just if you know, if you can't contribute into the build off to spread um, um, the memory of Blair, maybe a little um, dollar or two could you know help his wife. But I'm just putting that out there. Rick had mentioned um, this morning that there is a GoFundMe page. All right, so I had, I had, was talking to Blair and shooting ideas back and forth on a 34 Ford build. Um, 
and you know Blair was a, a hell of an artist too so um, part of our contest is going to be or not contest but part of our tribute build is I want you guys to draw the vehicle that you want to build uh, I, that's alright snipe um, I, I'll post it and that way you can watch it later but um, what was I going to say oh um, I didn't draw do a drawing of this build it's just um, I'm going to just throw this together real quick I guess you know but that's something that Blair would do he wouldn't just build a straight out of the box kit he always put his own touches to it he liked to draw it um but what I've got here is a Ravel snap together, one of those um, um, quick and easy kid style builds. Um, I got a, I bought a bunch of them without boxes, and um, I just thought I'd pull this out and cut it up. Most of my builds, like I expressed to Blair, most of my builds are mid sixties or sixties, you know, up, you know, kind of stuff. I really never got into the after war bombers and stuff like that or or you know little coops and stuff i just was wasn't my style uh wasn't my interest i should say i enjoy all um aspects of builds um real real cars and you know and scale but just something that i never really um was magnetized to like i am with this kind of stuff because i can go way custom with this you know, I, I, I would draw them short because to me, most of these were hot rods. You know, they're either pro street or they're a really high-end um, street machine. I, You know what I mean? So I would, kept drawing a blank. All I could see in my head was, you know, add a flame paint job, maybe some custom wheels. You know, I could never get my um, niche to just sit down and, you know, actually build one. So I pulled this out. Thinking of Blair, I started building a bed. And I only got two of these. So I need to... I want to build one to go across here. And I gotta build I gotta build a tailgate. But I probably won't put the wood slats on a tailgate. I'll probably just build me the tailgate like that. And then I cut the trunk open way wide to put this in there. And then I cut it too short. <laughs> I, I cut all that right there too short. See if you guys get that right there like that. And then, you know, I want to work way on some this. But also, we got the Big Eddie truck mm -hmm. that I plan to work on. Hello, Clutch. Um, and then, like I said, we was working on this the other day like that. Um, I might change this hinge. Um, this is just something I did real quick to show the suicide hinge um, for... Um, a follower who wanted uh, who wanted it um, learn suicide hand. So today, what do I work on? It's Workbench Wednesday. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna keep working on this. Um, so unlike Clutch, I don't go as precise. <laughs> You know, um, watching Clutch has, has made me, I went out, Clutch, I went and bought this, um, a better ruler, because all my other rulers, um, I used to have this edge ruler, Clutch, and I really just can't see what I'm working on. Um, I used it when I used to do some fabrication myself, and I kind of, it kind of got a little warped, and I can't see what I'm doing, so I went and got a clear one, and then I always... I got, I don't have everything Clutch does, but I do have this cal uh, caliber here, calibrator, whatever we call it, and I got this, so I'm going to start, I'm going to try to get truer finishes, because um, usually what I do is I usually rough it in, and I use my filler and I sanders to, you know, to get it back in there, um, but with that being said, I, I kind of could use some better tools and and help me, you know, do things better. Um, what I never understood, Clutch, if I have my if I have my uh, uh, calibrator here like this, and when I'm open it right here, this right here is going to be my inside diameter, and this right here will be the outside diameter. But what is what is this measurement here for? What is this right here? Anything? Is this of any importance? 
uh, this end. And right there. And basically, I only, I've only really ever used this caliper. Yeah, they call me Mini Fred. I don't have that depth function. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. I didn't, I did not know that. So I could still measure. <laughs> so I could still a uh, hold. Okay, I see what you're saying. Guys, we got Pappy in here today. Um, if you guys haven't checked out his video, will be coming up. Um, so make sure you guys watch that. He, he does the weekly What's on the Bench. Um, I really do want to sit down and build in front of you guys. So um, I'm going to... Right now I'm kind of at a loss. I have a, you know, I'm I, in my head. Um, I got my NNL build done and shipped to... Uh, the NNL show um, feedback was good. A lot of people liked it. Um, been contacted by a few other guys um, about how I did it, and it looks uh, kit issued. And if I would be interested in making another one to be casted, um, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know about that for me. Hello, Gothic. Um, so. What I want to do this right here is supposed to be a quick build. And like I said, I'm going to put that little wagon truck in there. Oh yeah, Tim. Yeah, I've been through there. I have a partial upper and a partial lower. Um, used to use my teeth for everything. I'd open them up grab the lid off of, you know, and then I just didn't brush them like I should, and yeah, tooth pain, tooth pain and an earache, I can, I can, like, if you see my hands, you can see stitch, stitches everywhere in my hands, you know, working on cars and getting cut and getting burnt, you can see stitches everywhere, I, I would work until the job was done just by putting some duct tape across my hand, but dude, I could not stand a toothache and an earache. You know, that's one thing. You know, so I, I feel you there, Timothy. I feel you there. All right. So I need to, here's, here's, here's my, what my agenda is today. Looking at this, I got a gap. I, I cut the wall down too short. So I need to fill that, I need to fill that gap in and I want to make this wooden bar. And um, on the fuel, where the fuel tank comes down, I thought about just bringing up a neck up to it, you know what I mean? And then having, you know, it set right there. But I think, I don't know if I want to do a, a, a drop seal here and leave that like that. So I don't know. Maybe hang the lights down off of here or something. So, um, like... Clutch had said on his video yesterday, not everybody has a stock of plastic. And here's here's my stock. Um, you know, not not everybody is feasible enough to have um, a gang of plastic sizes sitting around. Um, so what Clutch has been showing us is how to take a sheet of stock, and then he does he he does all his drawings and everything. Um, I'm guilty of, you can see like this piece here, I'm guilty of instead of measuring um, where I'm going to work, you know, what I need, um, you'll see um, like Clutch, he held up his engine block and he measured from here to here and then here to here and then this way. Uh, man, I've been so guilty of putting my piece in here like that and then I'm drawing my line where I need to be and with that I end up short sometimes, you know. And so that's the that cause and effect. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Me as being an avid builder for many years, that's something that in a shortness of a way, Clutch taught me yesterday by watching his video, you know. Oh, yeah, you guys are going to the saltwater. Yeah.
with the NES. And then, so, I know I need to go up a little bit from here. So what I was going to do is try to build my, my little gate. I super glued them on there just to get a test fit. And you guys, in Clutch's video yesterday, um, he showed some glues that he enjoys using. Um, here's the glue that I had got accustomed to, and um, it's gotten scarce in my area. But Clutch has a new glue, um, and you guys can go watch Clutch's video, um, then search that name for his glue, and then um, it will lead you up to the other products that they have. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know how. The guy said one day, one day he said, oh my God, you cut your hand open. You need to go get stitches. And I was like, nah, I just need to get to the toolbox and get my super glue. And you, <laughs> you can't see no, you can't see no uh, stitch marks in that scar right there. That's, that's because I put super glue in it and then I took. <laughs> I took a piece of tape and I just like gave myself a butterfly thing and it's wrapped and I, I finished doing <laughs> um, I was putting in if you guys ever work on frames um, a guy brought in a Monte Carlo and where the rust had ate up around the the hump of the frame uh, I made new frame rails on the end and in order to get it to match up to this piece up here um, you know the bumper don't take a whole lot of weight, but if it if it was in an impact um, I don't just weld um, Around the frame like this. I um, put diamond. I take a sheet of uh, um, Diamond gauge that I would um, you know cut out of a great bigger piece of sheet And then I'd put a diamond on that cut and that way it had not only this weld around the frame but it also had a surface weld and a diamond and it'd be a lot harder and it takes a lot better impact um, doing that way and on clutch's video today he explained the purpose of using um, softer uh, solder and hotter solder it the same works in the in the frame business and body shop business um, you have different gauges of um, welding wire rod and stuff like that for different purposes you know what the research has it Fred um, the super glue was invented for the field for the military guys um, to, to heal wounds and I don't know if that's true I never researched it but but that's what um, that's what it was supposed to be for so here's how I usually would fix my gaps I would put my plastic in there like that and then I'd come in here like this. And I draw that line. And then I'm I'm relying on the fact that I have everything in here. And I have that in the position where I need it to be. And then what I do is I go in there and I cut it. So right here is having giving me a fit today. And then what I do is make sure it stay even. But since I built this side so tight, um, that ain't going to work. Uh, it might work. It puts it in there really tight. And by the time I do paint and everything. But usually that's what I would do. And, you know, that's how Clutch, you know, my lesson from Clutch yesterday was um, you got you to gotta be a better measurement. Um, I'm thinking in my head, I can hide it. Uh, I told Pete today too. Um, I told Pete that I could always, sh I for me, I'll do the shortcuts where they won't be seen. Um, meaning you'd have to actually dig into my car to realize, oh look, 
um, he did this to get those wheels to fit or he did this to get that motor in there. Um, I don't try to shortcut anything that you can visually see with your eye. Usually it's going to be stuff underneath. Like if I had to tub this, um, I'm more likely to cut all this open and put a big tire in there. I'm not likely to build the hubs, you know, because a tire is going to hold it. Wasn't going to have the trunk open, you know, and stuff like that. Um, so there's ways to, there's ways I want to say to cheat. That's how I told Pete, you know, um, there's ways, there's ways to cheat, but then there's also, um, you'll know it's there. It's the, it's the crowd that won't know it's there. So guys, I need some direction. So what did I do here? Here's the Z wheels. And what I done here is I narrowed up the back to fit these tires that I had. So I sanded down the back. Um, I added aluminum um, aluminum to it so that way these axles, you know, that way it could slide in and on to the axles. Um, I'll probably have to shorten these when I get to the point to, you know, really mount the front end. But my goal is to make the truck bed with the stakes like that. And I kind of wanted to stretch the front end a bit. Not a whole lot, but I want, I still want it to be low, you know. Because right there, if I put it in the, here's the factory mount for the front end. Uh, for me, that's too high. Let's see if you guys can see that. I'll turn it this way. For me, that would be, that would be too tall. And then right here would be like the rear end. So I want to get this slammed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round this off here. So that way the axles will fit all the way to the floor. And then I'll manipulate. Um, where'd it go? And then I'll manipulate all, I'll manipulate all this um, to, to max around it. Cause if you see, here's my shortcut on this. Cause this is being a, a snap together kit. See, it's right here is already all hollow. So as long as I have a fuel tank to put here, and as long as I can get this rear end to wrap around this, I should be good. Cause I can always relocate all the ex this exhaust stuff. Um, you know, I can it, see how thick all that is so I can always shave all that down this right here um, I'm gonna try to detail it the best I can but it is a curbside snap together kit I probably won't go into it too far um, like cutting the hood open and anything um, I did just get this in the mail matter of fact right before I came down here um, I want to give a great big old shout out to um, um, Butch over there at Full Throttle Customs um, he sent me this one um, we was talking in a Friday night hangout, me, Pappy, um, uh, Butch, and um, James. Um, you guys that follow me know what I build, and they had mentioned that I had that I don't build the older stuff. Um, this was before Blair even passed away. Um, we were talking about um, I needed to build something older than I than I really do and Pappy and uh, young model master James and Butch over there at Full Throttle Custom they all suggested um, this kit said it's very detailed and 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 full of a lot of parts and then um, Sheldon um, also mentioned that this right here is a good kit so um, Butch sent me this so I gotta build this one here for Butch um, but first I'm gonna do this and then I'll get back into that so, I need a direction, so there's my direction. Let me, um, what I like to do when I go to round out my, um, my chassis arms like that is I'll use my round, I have two different size Dremel bits. I have this little, I have this little one and then I have a big fat one. Yeah, that's what it is, uh, Clutch. Like you said, I liked the Pro Weld, um, but like you said, man, it got scarce. It's like nobody wants to stock it. Um, so, I have, you know, I have another bottle. Here's, 
I always buy my glue two, at least two at a time. Um, guys, I like to have um, supplies of the stuff I use most. So, like if I showed you my glue tray, I have a bunch of super glues. I buy my activator and a great big old refill. Um, it just, to me, um, I'd rather have it on hand than have to wait for it to show up. So, <laughs> so um, I have two different size Dremel uh, barrel rollers is what I call them. And so what I'll do is I'll, I take the little one and then I just... And see, with the little one, I can go right in there. With the little one, I can go right in there, and I made my my sanding point for the axle round right there. So it's like, it's supposed to look like this, but now I did it like that. Um, a cheap... Um, a cheap way to, um, C-notch something. <laughs> so let's do the other side. All right, so now we got both sides done. Make sure that's in there, right? And then you can see, you can see how much further it brought those wheels, and how much further it brought those wheels up. Um, Todd, I don't want it to, um, I don't want it to actually look like a truck. I wanted it to look like a 34 that somebody made a bed for it. Um, yeah, I thought about if I cut it right here like this and then made it a cab, but I don't have a true Ford bed to use. I have this little one, but I don't like it. So I'm doing it like, um, like just a conversion. then once you do that you're going to have to get the rear end and everything set in place play the zombies What I'm, I'll show you guys what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing now is this right here. See how it has that level right here? I'm going to cut all that off. And um, I separated the trailing arms from this brace here. I'm thinking about redoing that brace. But right now I'm, I'm going to get this cut. I'm trying to get this down to the frame as low as I can. Yeah, but, but, um, Todd, see this right here is all molded in. Um, I'd have to do a whole lot of different work, and I'm trying just to modify, um, the snap kit and showing, um, that a snap kit can be more than just a quick build toy. You know what I mean? So basically, I'm trying to use most of the, the snap kit by Ravel for this build. Chip, are uh, you and Lisa ready for this weekend? Uh, is it this weekend or is it next weekend? Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> that TV is supposed to be down pretty well down. Having some issues fitting in here. I didn't have those before. I always try to make sure everything is together so that way. It looks like my issue is with the interior tub itself. Uh, Clutch, I read your post that you left this morning, bud. Uh, that's something we can work on. That's if he's back from... He said he was stepping away to do some painting. see what we got guys and like uh, clutch had mentioned on his head um, video that he was uh, sharing with us the other day um, when you go to cut plastic don't just go in there and start hacking it um, because you can remove way too much really really quick so it's best to go a little at a time, just sand a little at a time. Even if you don't measure like Clutch was doing in his video, because um, I, like I just explained, I'm guilty of not uh, measuring, that you can, you can make a, a bad damage by just going in there and sanding. Um, you could cause yourself more grief um, in the later parts of the build. If you guys do attempt to get out to the shows this weekend um, and whatever is in your neighborhood to do, um, please be careful. Um, have some safe travels. Um, but best of all, enjoy it. You know, enjoy yourselves. Don't, um, don't overdo it. Because um, sometimes, like we were talking, I was talking with uh, George uh, Vision 124 and he's like the day after the show, you know, you've done so much walking so much talking um, You're really You're just you're burnt you're burnt out and then it takes you a minute to to get back in the swing of things at the bench Even though you've seen a bunch of stuff you like um, you get excited I'm not on the camera my guys I'll try to do that 
I wish YouTube could find a way that your guys' comments during the live feeds would um, stick. That way I would love to be able to work and just work. And then if you guys had questions, come back at the end of it and, and then answer. But for the most part, right now what I'm doing here, before I start working on um, trying to get the stance right, I'm trying to get everything to fit in here and all the gaps cleaned up. Um, I'm a big believer of the test fitting because if you don't have everything right, when you're doing your um, modifications, um, when you go to do the finished build, um, you're going to not be too happy. This might be warped. It's giving me a booger over time trying to. Get that to set in there like that. Where the hell? Be right back guys. So here's the built one. I let my daughter build this. And maybe because it's screwed together like it should be, I'm having a problem. I'm getting I'm getting a big gap. Like right here, if you put it all in there together. This side here is fine. And this side here is like I need to find out what the hell going on oh there's a problem <laughs> it is warped let's see let's do some tweaking There you go. Maybe a little bit more. As I'm listening to the TV in the background, I don't know if you guys ever played the Call of Duty Zombies, but the narrator sounds like Trevor from Grand Theft Auto. It kind of does. It does, don't it? See, what's cool about this snap kit is it actually comes with another chassis and a fenders. So if I wanted to, I could actually put this on here and then still make the truck 
too, but I just, I like the open fender look. So, um, I don't play it, um, Brian, that's my boy, uh, he playing on an Xbox. Yeah, um, I'll be there, buddy. The best part about Trevor that I like is when you first turn on Grand Theft Auto, the guy pops up doing the craziest stuff. <laughs> One day he's in the middle of, uh, of the city and all he has on is his boots and some shitty underwear and he's beating the crap out of this bus driver. <laughs> Clutch, if you're back from your uh, paint booth, um, your little fiasco with the scissors the other day, um, here, here's my uh, clips that, you know, I'm sitting here and then that handle just broke right off too. This is what you get for buying um, sprue cutters at the dollar store. Um, they work good until they break in half. Guys, it looks like there's going to be some a good crowd of YouTubers from um, from a good crowd of the YouTubers at Chips um, show coming up. It'd be nice if you guys, you know, all got together and, and met up. Sorry guys. Like I said right now I'm just trying to clean up that gap. It seems like now most of the problem is going to be between here and there. Later Pappy. So now let's get to where I was getting. I'm going to remove, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove um, the gas tank from the exhaust and from these little shocks back here. Um, I would planned on making the gas tank anyway because of the, you know, big hole in it. So I'll be right back.
then right here I removed it. Um, I don't know if I'll remove the exhaust itself uh, yet at this point. Um, right now I'm just removing this so that way I can um, try to get this rear end and stuff to fit in. But with the video that Clutch just put up on making the head for the semi Hemi um, on the Pontiac motor, you follow the steps that he did in there and um, basically it's the same format um, you could use um, to build if you do a project like this. Um, watching what Clutch does, you can you know build your own fuel cell um, right there. Um, and if not, um, Sheldon... I believe Sheldon and Chip um, have fuel cells you guys can purchase from um, Extreme right here. Yeah, see, in order to get this down where I need it to be right there, I'm going to have to remove the exhaust. I'm cleaning off all the marks where the exhaust was molded in, guys. So now I just took out the third member and the pumpkin um, to try to get me down to where I need to be. And now I can see that my gap issue is going to be here within the shocks that we left on and right here in some of this uh, trailing arm. Even though this is just going to be a curbside um, style build, guys, you still want it to be clean. And that's why you can make little shortcuts like this instead of just hacking every everything out to get where you need to be.
because it still will be seen. So now I cut and I notched the trailing arms. And then now, since I got the flatness where I need it to be, now I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to put an angle to it. Instead of trying to sand that out, I'll put an angle to it like this. And that way it gives it more of a formatted look and then instead of just a hard square. And see how it gives you that curved look after you put a little bit of sanding to it. And then when you put it there on the car, I got it to where it will drop down. Now all the trailing arms and everything are under the frame rail. So now let's put... Well, that broke. I might have put too much super glue on these pipes. What happened, son? Someone killed me. Which one are you playing? Uh, the first Call of Duty. Alright. You on a mission? I'm on multiplayer solo. No. Oh. For years, guys, I was so infatuated with the micro nitro wheels, but they, they were always just so expensive. And then when Steve Zimmerman started making his wheels, it was like the cheapest, next best thing to wheels out there. I know a lot of guys like the Pegasus and the Aerosimas and, you know, stuff like that. But, man, for the money... I just have always enjoyed the Z wheels and Blair enjoyed them a lot. So with this, I'm going to use, um, even though it's just going to be a quick build, I'm still going to use Steve's wheels. All right, let me put some quick set on that. 
I would have loved to have been at the N and L this weekend. He had brought 450 sets. Mm. I'm going to put my axle in there because, see, I could still put the axle in there. I just sanded down everything I could to get low. And it looks like I have to do some trimming to the axle itself. Trying to get that post in there better, guys. You win, Mason? Yeah. I got four kills and only one death. Are you still live streaming? Yep, but... Sorry guys, I'm trying to get these aluminum posts that I made for the Z-Wheels in there a little better. They have good castings, he just don't have um, mounting posts on the backs. Um, so that lets us be able to put our wheels on say any type of vehicle versus being a, a male or a female like um some of the aeroshima fujimi stuff you know that that polys that pop in there okay what you got bud
Playing another round, son? Yeah. Well, I'd probably shorten that axle a little bit more. But now we can get it in there. And I still have the right height that I want. Like that, see? And now it can get in there and it's all the way down. We can even probably take that rear shocks down a little bit. We'll have to do some work to that drive shaft. Yep, there it is. Now I got everything setting where it needs to be. I'll, have, I'll make me some mounts. Um, you know, to add detail into here, into the frame, I'll make the mount. But there's the axle in. There's the right height. See, I won't be able to get that where the frame was before. Especially not if the fender was on. So now what I gotta do, I gotta find a way to, I'm gonna remove these and I'm gonna stretch the axle out here a little bit. That should be fine. You can already see the difference in the right height just out of them two. So it's going to be, <laughs> it'll be a lot, eh. Yeah, it'll be a lot lower. What's up, bud? You done playing? Yeah. Well, guys, that's about it for today. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'm going to come back up and I'm going to read through some of your guys' posts. I know a lot of you been here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to go back to the top if it lets me. Okay. Uh, Raphael, I got, um, we checked out your pictures, bud. Thanks for linking those up, um, to the Mr. Mini Greens page. That's a good looking wagon. Um, I really enjoyed, um, those wagons. I, um, let's see, right now I have four. I have four sealed of those wagons right now, and my, my, my plan is to cut them up and make some Crown Vicks out of them, um, some Crown Vic wagons and um, stuff. Um, hello, Gil. You, Gil says the hinge is sick, that he loves it. Thanks, Gil. Hello, George. Thanks for um, joining us today. I hope you're not um, in the middle of anything at work. Hello, Matt. My pen is dead. Why is your pen dead, bud? I don't know. I guess someone was playing with it the other day. I found it left on and it's dead. Give me two 
<laughs> I'm just reading some of your guys' comments here. And Clutch, um, he made the comment, you know, how when I was saying that I cheat here and there, and he goes, he does the same thing. It is good to draw stuff out and to get an idea of where you're headed. Um, but if you suffer from ADD or model building syndrome, as I like to call it, we're in the middle of something all the time, guys. And before you know it, we've changed our game plan. We went a different way. And so sometimes, um, just because we got it on paper and the ideas in our head, um, sometimes the stuff is never ending. Short uh, shot team blitz. Um, I don't think I'm familiar with you, bud. Um, so thank you for stopping by and hanging out. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, Jody mentioned that Sheldon um, is a with what is within driving range. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty neat that once you get online, you see how close people really are. And what's great about this community, I know only a few people are in here now, but the friendships that you guys build, um, just by hanging out on me uh, while I'm out here just doing whatever on the bench, it's, it's cool to see you guys um, building your friendships too. Oh, hey, hey Jimmy, how you been, bud? Um, hadn't seen you post in a while. If you guys ain't sub to Jimmy72, um, sub to his channel. He's always got something pretty, pretty neat being built. And then you guys just talking back and forth. Yeah, um, Jay, I should be there. Um, what do I have this year to bring, Jay, for the show? Believe it or not, bud, out of all those years I've won, I've won. All those years I've taken nice, uh, bright, shiny pieces. I actually have two weather-damaged vehicles to add. Um, like I mentioned uh, this week, Blair was um, was teaching... A lot of us how to do the weathering and, and everything. I know a lot of people, they like the salt effect. Um, but Blair always did his with, with stages of colors um, by the brush. And I took a liking to his style. So I got two really um, weathered out vehicles to come. I got a quick build fair lane to come. Um, two tuners. I think uh, a wagon, it's in the NNL, right? Uh, well, it's in New Jersey now. Um, I sent it up there for the NNL this weekend. Um, I built some planes and tanks over the winter, Jay. But, you know, at Heartland, they don't have classes for none of that. Yeah. Hello, Jay's, Jay's uh, mini scale garage showed up with me this afternoon. I'm just reading through your guys' stuff real quick. Um, thanks for hanging out. Um, yeah, Raphael, there's uh, quite a few shows in Florida, bud. Um, you need to... Who Who's some good people in Florida to contact, guys? Um, you need... Um, you got Matthew... Uh, Matthew Cummings, um, he'll have the MCC Garage, 
um, go sub his channel. Um, you got Colonel Reb. Um, they're in Florida. You could always go to the Atlanta show. I know that's a big show. Um, Chip, your show is your show in... I can't think right now. Um, you might have to drive a little bit, Raphael, but there's a lot of shows around that area. Hello, uh, James. Young Model Master is here. Uh, Jay Smith, thank you for joining in. Well, guys, I'm on, um, we'll get, uh, I'll be back on tomorrow, um, so don't, don't, uh, forget tomorrow we'll do the how-to, um, what I want to do on the how-to mm -hmm. is going to be for, um, Mark's Cutlass, and what I'm going to show you guys to do tomorrow is how to, once we cut a vehicle up like this to do the hinges, uh, oh, there it is. I'm going to show you how to clean the cuts up and um, how to uh, clean up your work, um, that, and then where I want to do some rescribing, um, show you guys how to open up um, these door gaps and stuff. Um, Remember, I've already showed you how to make the scriber tool. Um, tomorrow, we're just going to go through and we're going to do some scribing. And we're going to try to uh, fill in those um, gaps. Because um, whenever you're doing the hinges like this on something that's molded in, um, usually you go, uh, you know, it takes you a while to get everything set up to where it actually works. And, you know, now all that stuff works well together and correct. So... Um, we'll see you guys tomorrow, um, roughly uh, 11 a.m. Central Time. Um, so I hope you guys can make it, and um, we'll see you guys then. Thank you.